Well, ever since I've lived in Cresswell, which is about 12 years now, I've always known, like everybody around here, the story of the ghost of the White Lady. The Peel Tower used to be open all the time. I just got into the door, this ghost of a woman came down. It feels like there's someone here with me. That's why I'm not talking about it. One of Northumberland's most famous ghosts is the Grey Lady of Cresswell, and for hundreds of years people have seen her around the village and the Peel Tower ruins that she is said to haunt. But for the first time ever, we will get access into the Cresswell Peel Tower thanks to a restoration project that allows the public access to go inside. And tonight, the first ever paranormal investigation there. This village is known for a ghost story. There have been more reported sightings of it than any other ghost in the northeast region of England, as documented in many published books. Cresswell Village on the Northumberland coast is nestled within Druridge Bay, overlooking the North Sea. Evidence found here suggests humans have lived in this area for thousands of years, but its most interesting history surrounds that of the Cresswell family, who lived here and owned the land around it. The first recorded Cresswell was Sir Robert de Cresswell, who was recorded as living here in 1191. It was the Cresswell family that built this peel tower in the 14th century. It acted as a small castle-like fort to retreat against attacks from invaders such as Scottish border weavers. All the evidence of the structure and the archaeology uh, tells us that it's been here since uh, sometime in the second half of the 14th century. As part of the restoration project, uh, we had uh, various community archaeology projects as well, and some trenches just outside the tower, we found the foundations of a stone building, uh, and the pottery associated with that dated it to about 1200, so getting on for 200 years before the tower was built. And we think almost certainly that was the original Cresswell family house. Peel towers were very popular in Northern England and they were often built in sight of each other so that warning signals could pass down the coast in the event of an attack. A mansion house was later built onto the side of this building, however, it no longer stands, and with only visible signs being a line where it was once attached to the Peel Tower's stone wall, some coach steps and a former entrance. What we do know is in 1380, uh, John Cresswell was actually captured by the Scots and for his release, the family had to raise a ransom of uh, 40 pounds, uh, a very significant sum in those days. And you think, well, when he gets back here, you think, God, I don't fancy being captured by the Scots again. So he had the perfect reason for them maybe building the Peel Tower. We'll never know, but that's the best we can come up with. So what about the hauntings here? Well, I took the dog on the beach and it was just getting slightly dark and we come up the steps to go into the car right. and my husband was putting the dog in the car and I was just gazing at the towers and I noticed like the shape on the grass and at first I thought it was like a, a large dog right. which caught me in breath because there was nobody else there uh -huh. so I'm looking at it and all of a sudden it, it thought it rose up from the ground and then it looked like a man with like a hood on and a long gown right. and he was walking forward stooped uh -huh. So I said to my husband, oh, look at that man. And he looked up from the car and he seen him with us. Right. And he started walking slowly across the green uh -huh. with his arms folded and his head down. Right. And then my husband says, oh, it's just somebody, you know. So he was continuing putting the dog back in the car. Right. And as I continued to watch him, he just disappeared. I mean, literally, wow. he was there one minute. The village's most notable resident is that of the famous White Lady. Nobody knows who she is, but she is believed to be a daughter within the Cresswell family. 
The story goes that she had fallen in love with a Dane who had settled in Northumberland, but her family did not approve. Locals in the area had died at the hands of Danes, and they had not forgiven these Norsemen. However, they gave in, and she was allowed to marry her man right here at Cresswell Peel Tower. Her brothers were furious, and on her wedding day, decided to hide behind the rocks on Druridge Bay. When the Danes' boat arrived, they tricked him into following them towards the village, but instead had him ambushed and beaten to death. England was at war with Denmark at this time, and feelings were still very edgy. His smashed up body was strapped onto a horse and sent up to the Peel Tower. When the woman found out about his death, it is said she died of a broken heart. This is likely the fairy tale version, the reality of it being, she probably had depression from her grief and took her own life. One version of the story I've heard is that she jumped from the top of the tower. Another version says that she starved herself to death. Her ghost is said to be seen in and above the tower, looking out to sea. A sad face from a broken-hearted woman. Little is known about who her identity is, or even exactly when this occurred. The tower was built long after the Viking invasions, so it wouldn't have been then. England was technically at war with Denmark during the Anglo-Dutch Wars in the 17th century, and in the 19th century during the English Wars. The latter is unlikely, as a death this recent would have probably been recorded somewhere. The tower has been ruined for hundreds of years, but that has not stopped people from seeing her ghost. Well, ever since I've lived in Cresswell, which is about 12 years now, I've always known, like everybody around here, the story of the ghost of the White Lady, who's associated with this actual building. I've been told second, third hand that various people claim to have seen her. I don't know if you've heard of the Peel Tower at Cresswell. I have indeed, yes. We lived there. I'm 82 now, like. Right. Uh, I right. was only a young kid. My playground, I had free run of the woods. The Peel Tower used to be open all the time. Right. So one day, my cousin Peg came through from Newcastle to visit with. Right. I says, oh, who went to the Peel Tower? Pigeons, eggs, and goodness knows what, and that, right. you know, yeah. I just got into the door on my life, Helen. This ghost of a woman came down. She had, like, a rough, you know, you know the rough that, like, I... You keep you know, your hands in at the front. There's a bit in times or, yes. or something like that. Yes, with a big with a big collar on your, under yeah. the chin thing, yeah. Yeah, like that, and like like a small crown. Well, we've got, I've got such a blooming fright, <laughs> so did my cousin Peg, being the hero that I am, I, I run like mad. <laughs> in August 1985, some teenagers were having a beach barbecue party and had a bizarre encounter. A Miss D. Knight claims that her and another boy that she had met had snuck off and decided to go for a quiet wander up to the ruins of the Peel Tower. It was right here on this exact piece of land right in front of Cresswell Peel Tower that the couple who had been at the beach party just a few minutes before came, they were sat all cuddled up here. And when they looked up there, that is when they saw the White Lady of Cresswell. Another well-documented sighting was that of Margaret Moffat in the 1940s. She travelled to Cresswell early each morning from Ashington to work in the now-closed Jimmy Padredi Bakery in the village. One morning, she was picked up by some men who were finishing a night shift at the nearby colliery. When passing St Bartholomew's Church, they all saw what looked like a misty grey lady walking across the road and disappear into the woods where the old Cresswell Hall once stood. She would also claim that the baker's horse would have panics and would not pass Cresswell Peel Tower on the road. I tried my best to track Margaret down for an interview, but sadly she passed away in 1999. Barry would later tell me off camera that his own next door neighbour had even seen what he believes is the white lady outside of his own house, which is located opposite the Peel Tower. It's clear there's more than just a story to this haunting. So you join me on what I can only describe as a very historic day in Northumberland, Cresswell Peel Tower. 
is finally restored. Not to what it was originally, but this place is, uh, it's been a ruin for many hundreds of years and finally to see this place usable again. By usable I mean paranormal investigations, wedding receptions, functions, things like that. This place is just steeped in history and when you look at it from here and you, you think about the stories, just look at that line that goes down the side of the, the building, that's part of the original Cresswell um, Crestwell Hall that was adjoining onto the side of this building that's long since gone. And over the years you can see as well doorways, you can just see in here. Because these peel towers, you didn't just walk into the bottom of them, because easily to invade. You would usually enter uh, on the middle floors, top floors, by, via some sort of staircase that would be attached to the building. Let's just have a little wonder, or should we go this way? New entrances, I love how they've put so much effort in, lighting. They've done a good job with the, the funding work to get this project. I'm so excited to get inside this. You won't believe the stories in just about every ghost book about who could be that famous white lady of Cresswell. Who was she? Did she exist? Is it just a story that's passed down over the years? Or is there something in it? No smoke without fire. And look down here. We're seeing here this, uh, it's like a platform. This is an old platform for an old carriageway where you could pull up. The Cresswell family would get on board their carriage and if I just jump up here and I show you over this wall, it would take you out there. Um, there would be a, a winding path going down to the road. And this is where the Cresswell family would have been uh, in and out of their hall. And in fact, I can show you this down here as well. So just be careful with my step. And I can show you around this side of the building as well, because Cresswell Hall was later constructed over in the woodland over here, which we can show you a little bit later on. Sunnings have set in some birds up there, look. They've been at that all night. But that's the original pathway, the original driveway up to Cresswell Hall. Sadly, there's a caravan park just um, in the way of that. But that would originally have taken you over to Cresswell Hall, which is now just a stable block ruin. But what a magnificent building. And you can see specialist builders I'm not talking about your local builder who's done this. This is a specialist team of builders who've worked on this project. You can see there the new brickwork on the side of this building. And I love what they've done to it. It's beautiful to see something so old finally given the, the love it needs. I've been trying to get inside this Peel Tower for years. And finally, the keys were handed over, meaning completion of the renovation had been completed at 6pm that night. And within an hour, I was already inside, doing the first ever official ghost hunt at Cresswell Peel Tower. I've been looking forward to this for a while, and I have never yet been inside this building. Let's go in. Kind of reminds me of uh, that moment when I went into the haunted hut in Iceland, and uh, you get that moment as a paranormal investigator where you've never been in a building before. You see a lot of these famous places on TV, and I genuinely don't know what to expect with this. But I'm going to go in. There will be lights on on the ground floor. We can't turn those off. And on the staircase there will be lights, but other than that, the top half of the building will be night vision 
and in complete darkness. I'm also going to be really, I'm going to go in here with a different approach to how I've done previous investigations. So rather than, come on, show yourself, make a knock, make a bang. Let's just go in there and have a chat with whatever's in here. Okay. The door is still, brand new door as well. Brand new door, just opened. The key's just been handed over today. So this is the first day this building has officially been accessible by someone who isn't part of the construction of this place. So hello. I'll introduce myself, my name's Rob. I'm here to just have a chat. See if there's anybody in here. I've heard your story. You know, and it's still not even 100% complete. I love this. Still got the workman ladders left out. This is going to be a display case for artifacts that have been found on this site during the archaeological dig, which we know there's been a few. I've heard some stories about you. I've heard that a very tragic thing, tragic story, tragic event happened here on this part of the coastline. People call you the White Lady of Cresswell. But I'm sure you've got a proper name. You know, kids used to come and play in here in the 1950s and 60s before eventually they put a grate over this where the door is now to stop kids coming in and playing and uh, there is a story about one young boy who played the phone call out earlier on who claims he saw the lady walking down these steps here. So I will introduce myself properly. I'm here to try and talk to you. I try and talk to spirit people. And I totally understand that you've been in this place for centuries, hundreds of years, and not had anybody that's come to talk to you properly. And I totally understand that you've been in this place for... And I totally understand that you've been in this place for... But I mean you absolutely no disrespect. But if you do want to come and have a chat... You're more than welcome. And you probably don't know what this thing is in my hand. It's a, it's a camera. It's a good thing. It means that I can see you. And that people will believe me if I say that I've seen you. But if there's any way that we can communicate with each other, if I maybe ask you to do something and you're able to do it, or even if you're able to manifest yourself, if you know how to do that, I just want to show you guys uh, a thing about this place. So this is a barreled roof. Uh, we saw one of these on the Mary Queen of Scots video. So this is quite common in peel towers. You wouldn't normally come into a peel tower through a door. That would be too easy to invade. These places were put here to keep invaders out. So you would normally go up the side of the building, up some steps or somewhere, up a ladder, and enter via halfway up the building. And it's only recently when this became, you know, more of a 
a um, residential place for the Cresswell family that a doorway was put in. But you can still see parts of the original doors and things that have been knocked through. Um, just little things here on the on the ceiling. Also, I just want to point out as well, a lot of restoration has been done in this place in the past couple of years. You might notice brickwork. Here's a fine example. You've got a yellowy coloured brick, stone rather, just up here. Another one there. And you saw on the outside of the building in the, the intro of the video, some of the stones totally don't match, but that's by law. They've got to do that. I've just been told this today. You're not allowed to try and match original historic architecture and I don't get that but it's so that they can see what's old and what's new and by law they've got to do that so if you're looking at that thinking why have they put yellow stones up rather than even at least trying to match the colour by law they've got to do that so this place is going to be used as a a wedding reception even nicer maybe not So this place is going to be used for weddings, paranormal events, meetings, functions, things like that. So it's really cool that they've that they've converted this, restored this place. I might have a little wander upstairs. Is it worth putting this onto night vision? I think it is. look. No rope to get yourself up. Okay, so we do have light on the stairs but that is it. So the story of the boy who came up here, or well now a man, claimed that she walked down this staircase. This is the next level. Let me just turn the IR down a little bit. So this is probably going to be the main function room. Downstairs will be more of a meeting area. This is going to be a function room. Maybe weddings, events up here. I've got a little artificial wooden floor. So they think this was originally two rooms. A kitchen area and maybe a living quarter when not 100% but you can see that there's been fireplaces just in here. And of course they've put a new roof in here as well. Before, if you look at it, Was that my breath? Yeah, that was my breath. Um, it is quite cold. Um, yeah, if you look at old Google Earth, this place doesn't even have a roof. So it rains, it was just going to fill up with water. And Historic England originally weren't going to fund a roof put in this place, but they've... Um, in the end, they've given in and they've said, yeah, if you want to spend all this money on restoring it, we need to make sure it's going to be there in more than 30 years' time. Otherwise, there's no point spending money. So again, another, what is this, an old enclave in here. You can see when this was partly connected to the old residential area, that's been a doorway that's now stoned up I think this what's in here oh it goes right in oh this would have been a toilet this would have been a toilet
So if you're up here, do please make me aware that you're here. Apparently you were going to marry your lover from Denmark. I've been to Denmark, it's a nice place. Was he from Copenhagen? You must have been a really nice person if somebody was gonna move across from another part of the world, sail across. To be with you, he must have really liked you. Must have, must have been true love. You loved him, and he loved you. Then whatever happened next, whether it's true, that your brother or brothers. Oh, I saw something move. That was an orb. That was an orb. And that was. It went straight towards me, and I feel <laughs> I've just had shivers. I've just had shivers. Your brother, or brothers. Oh, I saw something move. That was an orb. That was an orb. This orb is spectacular as it appears to float and change direction and head towards me, standing by the window. There are many explanations about what can cause an orb, being from spiritual energy, through to being merely dust or a flying insect. I hope I'm not upsetting you. I genuinely feel sorry for what happened. I don't know much about it. People think it might have just been a story and that it didn't really happen. Other people believe that you genuinely do still stay in this place. What the hell? I think it might be an animal outside. Look like a bird. Sounded like a scream. You can like make a tap or I'll stand still against a wall so I don't create any noise. If you can just make a noise, like a tap or a bang, not to scare me, but just to let me know that you're able to listen to me. I'm assuming you are a Cresswell, because the Cresswell family had pretty much all of this land, as well as the buildings on it. How did you die? Some people said that you starved. The people say that you jumped off the roof. The people said that you died of a broken heart. So I'm going to have a little look because I know people have seen her up here. We should be able to go up. Excuse me for just going a little bit slowly and I don't die. So 
this takes you up to the sort of mezzanine veranda type place that they've had. Which looks down onto what I'm going to call the function, but I know it wasn't a function, it was a kitchen. But then if we just go out of here. This is the exact place where people have seen. I'm setting dogs off. Just put the light on so you can see down. People claim to have seen her up on this exact turret here. I don't want to drop the camera down there, otherwise I'll probably smash it up. And over there, the village of Cresswell, you can see the lighthouse occasionally flashing, there it goes. And then over here, the woods where Cresswell Hall once was. I decide to use the EMF meter, but before doing so, I do a quick sweep of the building to make sure there is no areas where electricity from the wires could interfere. Okay, I have set a few things up, and I think I found a way we can communicate. If you are a spirit being and you do think that communication is something that you can do with me, then I just want to draw your attention to this EMF meter that I've put down. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to look at it. If you put your energy into that, I can see that you're doing that when it lights up. Okay? And I'm not going to stand next to it because people might think that I'm interfering with it in any way, and I'm not. We've been around this place, we've looked where the lights are, there are no electromagnetic fluctuations coming up. I also have in my hand this, it's a box that you can use to talk, it will scan white noise, so if you want to talk, try and talk and I'll see if I can, I can hear you. Let's get this thing going. Hello, can you start off by telling me your name? Can you talk to me? Who was Rollo? Did you die in this place? Oops. Are you a member? 
member of the Cresswell family. Is that you trying to talk? I think I might hear you. I understand I'm the first person to properly come and look for you in this building. Can you speak loudly and clearly? What is your name? Can you speak loudly and clearly? What is your name? I am hearing a woman's voice. Are you known as the White Lady of Cresswell? If so, can you please say yes? Are you happy that, uh, that this place has been restored? from the ruins that it was. I received nothing more for the next 15 minutes using the spirit box. Yet earlier on, I clearly had female vocal tone indicating a woman was talking. I tried to communicate using the EMF meter when I was distracted by a noise outside. Was this a lady or could this merely be an animal? We'll focus maybe on this EMF meter. We'll see if we can get some action going. If you're in this area, can I ask you to come and stand on here in front of me? where that small grey box is that you can see. What the hell? Might have been buried outside. That's birds. So I'm standing about a metre away from it, so it can't pick up anything from me. Can you put all of your energy through that grey box to stand on it, do everything you can? Can you make a noise? Just any noise. I would love it if you could show yourself. I just want to see what you what you are, what you look like. The EMF meter gave no fluctuations all evening. I next tried the SLS camera. As you can only see through night vision, the SLS camera is using thousands of infrared lights to create a 3D map and thus supposedly detecting spirits within the room. I'm now using the SLS camera. I'd love to be able to see you. Can you appear for me? Can you just stand somewhere? Can you show yourself? Can you stand directly somewhere where I can see you? 
anywhere. All of a sudden the SLS camera started to freeze and get really slow, yet I could see the outline of a figure standing in the doorway by the stairs. Oh, hello. Hello. If that is you, please wave your hand in the air like this. What is your name? Are you stopping me from going up the stairs? Is that where you, you people see you? I really wanted to see a manifestation, but then it all just seemed to come together. Can you speak loudly and clearly? What is your name? The peel tower used to be open all the time. I just got into the door. This ghost of a woman came down. I wish I could have stayed in the peel tower for longer, but this was not possible. However, there have also been sightings of the lady out in the woods. There are also ruins in these same woods where the old Cresswell Hall, a more modern building, used to be that has been left derelict in the 20th century. Okay, I'm deep in the woods here in Cresswell. I've got one more place I need to show you on my night here. So this is about a five, ten minutes trek through the woods and you can kind of just see it. It's going to be really impressive when we do get there. I think I've disturbed a few sleeping birds, a bit of wildlife. But it'll be worth it. Don't worry. So I'm using night vision to see exactly where I'm going. This is the old Cresswell Hall. Remember those pictures of the billiard table? The snooker table? It was here. Look at it in there. It's all overgrown. Obviously graffitied sadly by vandals. Let's go right in. This is the old stable block. But this is the area where over 100, maybe 200 years ago, there was one of the finest mansions. One of the finest mansions that you will ever see. I need to get across to the right somehow. Mommy. 
hear noises out here. when there's wildlife around. You're bound to hear things. Don't tell me I'm getting lost. Really muddy. This is the site of the old Cresswell Hall. Right here, it's all overgrown. You can see the walls of it there. different when you're here at night. Big hole probably from the tree roots. The trees probably created that effect. It's at this point I hear some wood snapping, very close to where my location is. This was not some small twig, this was a very loud crunch, as if somebody else was out there in the woods. I decide to get out of there, and I'm not talking into the camera in case somebody can hear where I am. I could not see any lights from torches from anybody else in the woods, but I definitely felt as if somebody else was there, and there was a strange interference coming through on my camera as well. My night in Cresswell had come to an end. It's hard to tell if this place is genuinely haunted or whether this is just an old legend that has been passed down over the centuries. What do you think? I would love to come back to Cresswell and that is now possible because the Cresswell Peel Tower has now reopened and is no longer just an old ruined shell. Maybe this is a video for another time. But in the meantime, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. There's more videos coming very, very soon.